Hi guys and welcome back to this um, in-depth tutorial about how to do texturing, procedural texturing with texturing Swayze for Mari. So in this video, what I will show you is basically how to do the texturing Swayze pass of displacement. So again, remember that texturing Swayze is, let me just open the website for you. So texturing XYZ is where uh, we'll get, we'll be able to get all of our displacements, your face displacements with all the details for the skin pores. And uh, when you are working on creatures, so some kind of creatures like this guy, for example, or even when you, let's say that you need to work on an ape, or uh, if you need to work on a cat or, or dog or whatever creature you want to do with fur uh, or without fur, like a sphinx cat, for example. So you will be able to use human surface displacement for that from texturing Swayze, and that's what we will be doing in this tutorial. So. As um, we show, as I showed in different tutorials on texturing Swayze and on my YouTube channel, is basically what we'll use is a displacement with three different channels that will be baked in. So we have the all-in-one packs that are coming from texturing Swayze. The red channel will be the displacement. The green uh, channel will be the bump, and the blue channel will be the surface or the micro, sorry, the micro displacement, which is even finer than a uh, bump. So we are using micro displacement to break the specularity, basically. So it's something that is working nicely for the for the shading. So what I'll be using for this tutorial is uh, one of the face pack, one of my favorite face pack, which is a, a female 30. And um, you can use the micro displacement also for this tutorial. So if I'm just, let me just bring back my um, page with texturing XYZ, show you the micro displacement packs that are available on the website. And what you want to use one of S pack, for example, let's say that you want to use it as a cheek because it's working nicely for the kind of skin you want to achieve. So you will be able to use this tutorial for that. And again, you will have what you want to do with this pack is basically um, three channel in just one file. So uh, all in one texture that you can just project into Mary on top of your model. And you will end up having textures like that then can be projected, texture like that, that can be projected as well. This looks more like skin of the leg or skin of, um, can be the skin of the belly or skin of the back. This one is skin of, part of skin of the belly and so on. So yeah, definitely you can use a lot of different packs, but what I will use for this tutorial is basically just one face pack. And I can just, put that in Mari in order to be able to start painting my displacement. So let's see how we can paint our, our displacement directly in the viewport. So I will just select all of my files at once and just drag and drop them into my image manager. Let's wait for Mari to open them. So it's taking a bit of time also because of the weight of the file, but it's not too bad. And what you will have to do after that is also to make sure that you are selecting the correct values, the correct color management for your file. So basically what the kind of file we imported here are uh, scalar, should be scalar, because what we are interested in is the values and not the colors uh, of the uh, the colors of the file. So we want to make sure that the value, a value of 0 0.5 is equal to a value of 0 0.5 and a value of one is equal to a value of one and value of zero is equal to zero. Uh, let's say that you are working with a file that has not been imported as scalar, then you will have some issues with the color management in Mari shifting the values. Okay, so the file have been loaded in uh, my image manager. Let me just select them to make sure that I'm painting some scalar data. So we just select them one by one. Start by this guy, put that in scalar. Do the same with the other files. I think I just need to select them one by one. Okay, then this guy, putting that in scalar data as well. So 
So that's interesting. Um, yeah, so putting this file in scalar data is automatically switching the color space to raw, which is definitely what we want. So let's have a look at how to start painting some displacement on top of our model. So the first thing we want to do, of course, is to make sure that we have a layer on which to paint. What I will do is to put the color at zero. So I'm using a 4K map, which should be enough for most of the cases. Uh, you want to use 8K if you have a um, machine that is really able to run at full speed and also really able to manipulate EV calculation on the GPU. So if you just have a um, mid-run GPU, I will recommend you to, uh, to use 4K. But that's, so putting the alpha at zero, also to make sure that this layer will be empty from the beginning. The def will be 16 bit. You can paint 32 bit, but for skin pores, uh, it's not useful to use 32 bits. Should, could be more useful if you are painting displacement coming from from animals that are available on texturing Swayze. And the color space will be in SACG, and uh, it will be a scalar data layer. So I can just click on OK now, double click on this layer, and I will quickly rename that mdispLR for layer. OK, so I have my layer. What I want to start doing is simply to plug that as a bump. So do not plug your displacement directly into the dis displacement slot because it's, it's going to be too heavy for the viewport. So just want to plug that into your bump slots. And then uh, what you want to do is to put a value at one, which will mimic the impact of displacement. So let's just have a look at this layer. Nothing is happening on top of it. So what I recommend you to do as well for this guy, if you are selecting this layer is to merge it on top of a mid gray value. So we'll just use a merge. So this one will be the layer. So the layer will go on top. And what I will have as a base will be a simple color like this, putting this color in scalar data, picking a value of 0.5, okay, and calling that my M this color, and I will simply pl plug that at the base, and this guy will become my M this MRG for merge. And select the two of them and click on L to start sorting a little bit my my viewport, uh, sorry, my back, my backdrop or my node graph actually. So double click on the M displacement. I will start loading maybe the left or the right cheek. So I will just center my object in my viewport, uh, select my right cheek and the and just drag and drop that onto my object and start painting a little bit of displacement. So I just want to manipulate my image the way I want. So it's aligning to the surface of, of my object, something that you can do, which makes the workflow to become a little bit quicker if you do not have like symmetrical UVs or um, if you have a symmetrical model, even if you have symmetrical UVs actually. So something that is making the workflow to become quicker is by using the mirror projecting. So when you are using the mirror projecting, you just want to make sure that also you do not have any mask. Because if you do most of the time, so by default, Mary is having a mask, which means that if you want to paint a value on the other side, the side that you are not aiming at, um, you will not be able to do it. Like for example, if I want to paint some black in this side, it's working. But if I want to paint, in, paint it on the other side, it's not because of this dynamic, dynamic mask. So in order to get rid of that, I will go in, um, where is that? Should be in tool properties, I think. Is it projection, projector, nope, in painting, yeah. So it will be in painting, I will just dock this window, go in mirror projection and uncheck the dynamic masking. Close that. And now we do not have this mask anymore. So I can start painting on the two sides without worrying about uh, where I'm aiming with my camera. So what I can do is to 
quickly show my model. I will just display that. Display the material itself and not the channel anymore. Okay. And normally, because of the settings we have in the shader, we should be able to start seeing the displacement happening right now in the viewport. So I always like starting by painting a bit of um, displacements before I'm doing my setup. And the next step that I will show you now in this video is how to split the texture in XYZ displacement in order to control it properly. So at the moment, so again, we spoke about having a displacement that is three different channels. We have a displa displacement with red, green, and blue channels, but everything is just um, merged as one channel. So I, I believe, I'm not quite sure about how it's working in the viewport, but I believe Marie to be using just the um, red displacement at the moment, which means that we are losing the information coming from the from the bump channel and from the micro displacement, which can be really useful. So how can we show them back in the viewport? How can we split them into our material? So I will just save this, okay, and show you how you can do that. So let's get rid of this. Now I want to quickly have a look at this. Okay, so this is what I have at the moment. And again, I want to start splitting things so I can have a better control. So what I will do is first to merge that. Oops, interesting. Okay, I will just select this M displacement. This guy, click on M to merge it on top of something else. This one should be over. Then I will use a color, so same as I did before. Actually, I could just use this M displacement color, copy and paste it here, and plug it here. So nothing is happening at the moment, and it's because we do not, uh, we are just, we are still using the same merge as the one before. So what we want to do is to start using a copy channel, and the copy channel will be the node, the, pro, the adjustment node that will actually start splitting the different channels. So you see, we have a copy channel between the M disp and uh, the new merge, and this copy channel is basically splitting the red channel. If we were to use a green channel, then it, it would be uh, splitting the next one. So I will leave that as red, start doing a little bit of sorting, so this will be my extract disp cc for copy channel control c extract disp underscore mrg click on ok leave that like this then i will simply copy this setup paste it here and paste it a second time ok and this one will be our extract bump. So the bump is in the green channel. And this one will be our extract micro. And the micro will be in the blue channel. Okay, so I can just redo the connections, making sure that everything is working the way I want. And using the same color. So why am I using a color basically? Because when I'm looking at what is happening into my merge, I can see that here uh, the extract channel is happening only on one channel. So that's why I do not have anything happening underneath. So that's why I'm using this gray color as a base. And I'm merging all the different channels on top of this base color, this base gray color. So that's why you can just basically use it once and you will not have to use it anymore. So um, I would just quickly rename things a bit more. Okay, let's rename that. So they, are, they have not been ex uh, extracted individually. So what we want to do from now is to start merging them back in order to control the, their intensity. So 
that's pretty easy. What we want to do is to start with the displacement. This will be our base. Then I want to create a new merge and I want to merge, start merging the bump on top of the displacement. I will select this merge, put this merge into contrasts overlay. So we'll see that it will brighten all the values. Okay. And it's because we have the color space um, enabled. So we just want to disable that. And it's working fine now. So you will just have to play with the elements in order to make um, sure that the pump is visible or less visible, is happening more or less on top of the surface. Control C, Control V in order to do it again. Like this, and finally this merge will end up into the bump. Let's start sorting things a bit better. Oh, so it's not, not too good, I think. Yeah, I will just keep it like this for the moment. Okay, I will just start renaming things the way I want. So this merge will be our um, I need to rename that. Bump. And that one will be the micro merge. Okay. So this one will be my bump intensity underscore MRG. And the last one will be my micro intensity underscore MRG. Okay, and what I want to do now is to have a look at my material. See how it's looking. See if I get like a bit too much of micro happening on top of the surface or uh, if it's breaking a bit too much of the spec, just like it's doing at the moment. You see, it's just like too granular. So what you want to do is basically to just select again this micro intensity and you just remove the opacity of the micro layer happening on top of the surface. Same for the bump. So the bump is at 100% at the moment. I want mostly the displacement to happen on top of, of the surface, or I can just reduce this overlay. So we have this first setup that is ready. Now we want to start merging things and uh, creating a group in order to make sure that we, ha we can have our texturing XYZ unpacker. And this texturing XYZ unpacker will be something that we can integrate later inside of the sh of the channel, uh, on in our material. Sorry. So now that everything has been connected the, ra the right way, I will just create a backdrop. Okay. This one will be my M disk. I will select a gray color, gray value, more than a color. Click on OK. So what I want to do is to leave out the information, the layer on which I will pen. So I don't want to put that into my group because the group is supposed to be something that is procedural. So it doesn't need to get any paint. Um, any bitmap information in it. It just need to control the values. So in order to do that, I can just simply select everything here. Click on tab and create a group and everything will be connected the right, the, the right way. And um, Marie, Marie will automatically create a group for me. So I can use this group and this group will become my M this or can become my texturing xyz unpacker underscore grp we'll just quickly save my scene and i want to have access to some of the values that are available in this texturing xyz unpacker 
without having to dive again inside of this group. So in order to do that, Mari has a really great way with dealing with that. So what you want to do is to use the promotes or the canob manager that you have here. So I can do that, do that different, different way. So you can use this uh, canob picker and you can basically pick the values that you want. So that's one way of doing it. And my favorite way is basically dive back inside of this material, start renaming things a little bit better. So this one will be by M disk in or M disk. Let's call that M disk in. Okay. And what I want to do here is to start uh, picking the values myself. So I'm interested into not this one because this one will have to be will have, will always have to extract the head channel. This one will always have to extract the, the green and this one the blue. So what I want to do instead is to play with the different intensity. Intensity of the displacement is something that we want to keep at 100%, but intensity of the of the pump is something that we may want to reduce. So in order to do that, I just want to double click on the pump intensity, and I will promote the value in a hierarchy hierarchical way. So we will do that with the pump intensity first, and then select the micro displacement. So let's select the pump intensity, and I will click on this promote value, then micro intensity, and I will click again on this promote value. Let's go back into our main graph. And when I'm double clicking on this texturing XYZ unpacker, now I can play directly with the different intensity. So I can add a bit more bump, or I can break the spec even more with a bit more macro displacement. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, I feel that it's probably the best way because you can really dive inside of your former node graph and see what is what should happen first. One last thing that I'm adding in order to get a better control of my displacement, something that you can do just before this node, I think, is to add a gray node. Okay. I will have a look at this guy. I can, uh, yeah. So with this gray node, what I want to do is to start adding a bit more contrast. For example, I can make the value to become a, a bit darker or a bit brighter. So I'm always trying to maintain the contrast between the two values. So if I'm reducing from zero point 15 then I will add one um, I will add 0 0.15 as well so I can play with this value in order to get more vibrancy into my displacement so if I want to do that let's rename things a little bit better and this grade GRD if I want to do that what I can do is simply to promote also this lift and gain values Let's go back onto our texturing XYZ unpacker. So this one, because it should happen at the top, it should be a primary value that we are playing with. I can simply go into my um, group K knob, group knob, group node <laughs> knobs, um, and then simply select my MD underscore GRD. And this one, I will just put that up. And again, I will be able to play with the different values. So I can mind minus this value, reduce from this value and add it to add even more contrast to my displacement. Let's have a look at what this guy is doing. So if I'm reducing that, I will reduce the dark values of my displacements. And you see it's starting to flattening a little bit the displacement. So that's how you can play with it.
And that's it basically. So from now, you will just have to select this Marie displacement layer. Select your displacement and you can just keep painting your displacement on top of the surface of your model. So guys, this is it for this video and looking forward to see you during the next explanation.